everyone, so today I am here to do a kind of bittersweet video um, because I am doing a book review on my final Haruki Murakami novel that I had to read to complete his works. And that is Colorless Sakura Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage. <sighs> if you guys haven't been around for the past like year and four, five, six months or so, I have been reading and reviewing every single one of Haruki Murakami's novels. Um, in publication order after my first three, I read Wind Up Bird Chronicle, Norwegian Wood, and Kafka just uh, right away, and then from there I read them in publication order, which means that this is my last book that I need to read. <laughs> so it's a little bittersweet because this means I am completely done with reading his novels. I mean, I probably will go back and reread quite a few of them, but now I'm completely caught up. I will be reading his short story collections um, and probably reviewing them, if not individually uh, as bind-ups, then as a whole, like an entire just like review of all of the short story collections. But this is my last Murakami novel review. <laughs> And that does mean that I will be making a new Haruki Murakami video uh, because my old one is definitely out of date. I made it when I'd only read like six of his books and I need to edit it. So that is my most viewed video though and I'm always like, guys, please, I made that like a year ago. I need to remake it so I can finally do that now that I've finished this book. But anyways, I want to talk about my feelings on Colorless Sakura Tazaki and his years of pilgrimage. I, as usual, will be doing a spoiler-free section at the beginning right now and I will be going into spoileries discussion kind of thing at the end. So, this book. I've heard, I don't want to say mixed things, but like, I don't hear a lot about this book, but when I do, it is mostly positive, which I have to agree with. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars, um, so, I mean, it is decent. I've given a couple of his books 5 stars, and I've given like one of his books 2 stars, so this was a pretty good Haruki Murakami novel. I actually really quite enjoyed this. I read this basically in two sittings, um, about a week apart unfortunately, but I basically sat down and read the first 100 pages, and then I basically just binge read the last 200 pages all at once, and I think I would recommend kind of doing that, because the story does flow very well together after the first 100, 150 pages or so. Like, the last uh, 200 pages are very much, like, you just kind of keep going with it. Like, I didn't even realize I had binge read the entire book before I, like, was flipping the last page and I was like, oh, I finished it. Whoops. Uh, but this book, if you guys don't know, follows a man named Tsukuru Tazaki, who is, like, I think 36 years old, as per usual with her Murakami uh, protagonist, and he has come to a point in his life where he's just kind of at a standstill. He has a girlfriend at the moment, but he doesn't have many friends. He has a job that he, like, enjoys but, like, doesn't love. And basically, he's just kind of, like, flowing through life with no, like, big things happening or friends or anything like that. His girlfriend is actually the one who tells him that she thinks he needs to kind of figure things out with his life and that he needs to kind of confront his ghosts of his past because when he was a kid, she finds out um, when he was in high school, he was really, really close to four people who were all, um, all of their last names were colors. I think there's like blue, white, black, and gray or something, um, which is why he's colorless to Tazaki because his name doesn't have a color in it. Um, and she basically goes like, why aren't you friends with them anymore? And he tells her when he went to college, there was like, it was like his second year of college and he came back and none of them would speak to him anymore. They completely cut it off with him and he was left alone. And from there, he only made one good friend after that who also left him. So basically he's just been alone this entire time. So his girlfriend is like, I think you should probably go and find these people and ask them straight up, why did you all stop talking to me? Like, what happened? And so basically that's what he does. But yes, this uh, adventure to kind of discover what happened between him and his friends, because he doesn't even know what the hell happened, like why they all stopped talking to him, takes him back to his hometown and also takes him like all across the world to like meet with people. And it was an adventure. It was a, it was a fun story to follow and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Um, my criticisms of this book, I mean, I always don't particularly love Hergi Murakami main protagonist males because they're all very, very similar. I've said this in multiple ones. I quite like Toro Okada, um, but I don't really know if that's just because he was the first of Hergi Murakami uh, protagonists that I read about um, because they're all basically the same uh, person. They're all very 
like mid-aged, early 30s males who are kind of, they can't, like undecisive, bland, pretty dull characters who don't do much, don't have much opinions, just kind of boring characters. Um, but Murakami, I actually, ha I wrote a paper on him for college, so I actually discovered that he says that he purposely writes his characters like this because he likes taking a very average Joe kind of character that like anyone could relate to um, and throwing them into fantastical situations. Um, so I guess I kind of understand why Sakura Sasaki and Toro Okada and the unnamed narrator and every other male protagonist is this way because of that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't particularly love reading about these male characters who are so boring, um, but the characters around them are always so amazing. All of Sakura Tazaki's friends are such interesting characters, and all of the things that happened to him because of them is very, very interesting, and I enjoyed learning about all of them. So that was definitely a plus. I really liked all of those side characters. And I also really liked this book because it was kind of the perfect blend of a Haruki Murakami novel. Murakami kind of has two ends of the spectrum. He has, in my opinion, pretty dull, boring, regular contemporary romances like Norwegian Woods, Button Nick Sweetheart, and then he has wacky, weird, crazy, magical realism books like The Wind Up Bird Chronicle and Kafka on the Shore. This was kind of a perfect blend of those two, which I really, really liked. I was kind of waiting on a book like this from him because this is a contemporary story, obviously. It's just a guy kind of trying to figure out what happened between him and his friends, but it also has quite a few fantastical elements, kind of. It kind of reminded me of Wind a Bird Chronicle because there's, it's kind of like in dreams and stuff that these things happen, as well as a story that another character tells. Um, but I really liked the blend of it. It definitely made what could have been just a really boring contemporary novel into a lot more. I think if this hadn't had those wacky weird elements to it, I probably would have given it, given it like a three star. Um, but I really liked how it blended the contemporary normal story with the weird and wacky of Murakami. So that, I think, is about it for the non-spoilery section, so I will be going into a spoilery discussion. Mostly, this is what I had wrong with this book, unfortunately. Um, I can't tell you guys everything about why I bumped it from a 5 to a 4 star, because it was a really great book, except for three things that bothered me, but they're spoilers. So I'm very sorry, I can't explain why. Just know that there are reasons why I bumped it from a 5 to a 4, and I'll be talking about them now, but they are spoilers, so leave if you haven't read the book or if you don't want to know what happens. This is just gonna be a rant because I'm so annoyed. <laughs> okay, so, um, the three things that I had wrong with this book was the fact that, okay, I get that Haruki Murakami likes his open endings. I'm a huge fan of open endings. I love open endings. They're some of my favorite types of endings is when the author doesn't necessarily tie up everything in a perfect little bow. Um, I don't necessarily love that, but this book was a little bit ridiculous on how many loose ties there were. I was just like, dude, come on. So uh, starting chronologically, first off, we never find out what happens to Heida. Like I understand Murakami is just like, yeah, and then Sakura Tazaki never saw him again. But I'm just like, can we get a little bit more than that? Because I really liked Heida. I think Heida was like my favorite character. And I just wanted to know if what happened between them, like the whole dream, like, sex thing. Was that real? Was it not? We never find out about that. We never know what happens to Heida. We never know if like the story that his dad t about his dad was actually about him or something like that. And I just wanted to know what happened to him basically. I also kind of was a little confused about the story about his dad because again was it about him in reality and he was just trying to make it seem like it was about his dad like even uh, Sakura brings that up um, but also <coughs> Also, I like, uh, so I, like I said, I read this book in two kind of chunks. I read the first hundred pages and then I read the rest of the book. So, and it was like about 10 days in between that. And I don't know if I just don't remember the story correctly or if I missed something <laughs> because I didn't fully understand what that story had to do with anything. Like usually when a character tells a story in a Haruki Murakami novel, it has to do with like what's gonna happen in the main character. And I didn't necessarily understand where this story connected. Um, so yeah, I was, I was a little confused on that. If anyone wants to tell me what I missed, then please do. I was also a little bit annoyed and I felt like it was kind of a, it was kind of like a cheap shot or like easier on Murakami 
to make Shiro oh, shut up dude to make Shiro have died because we never find out what this entire story actually like what happened because we get like Shiro died so we can never ask her what happened to make this entire story happen we know that everyone else is like Shiro just was like you raped her like that's what she thought and we never actually get to ask Shiro like why did you say that like you knew like everyone else knew it was a lie did she actually know it was a lie or did she genuinely think that's what happened was it connected to the dreams like what happened i just want to know like shiro's side of this and it was kind of like a cheap like kind of get out of writing a little bit more by making her die and i just kind of wish that we had gotten to know what the hell happened because this entire book happened because she said that and we never find out why she said it. Like, we never find out exactly what was wrong with her mental health. And we never find out why she said this. And if she was lying or if she genuinely thought she was telling the truth. So, that was a little annoying. And then just the entire ending of this book. That was such... That was so annoying. That was just obnoxious. That's kind of what exactly brought it down from a 4 to a 5 star. Was the fact that Murakami could have very easily just written the end of this book. And literally, this wasn't even just an open ending. This was Murakami just going, I'm just not going to tell you what happens next. Like, it's not that big of a deal if Sarah was had another boyfriend or is she going to pick Sakura Tazaki or not. Like, I don't think it would have been that big of a deal to just write that. And it was a little annoying and I really hated it. <laughs> but anyways, overall, I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it and I recommend it if you guys like Haruki Murakami. It was a good book. Even if you don't like Haruki Murakami, I think you guys could enjoy this book. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And look out for my new video about Haruki Murakami. It should be coming out in the next month or so. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this review video and I love you all and I'll see you all soon. Bye! But anyways, overall, I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it, and I recommend it if you guys like Haruki Murakami. It was a good book. Even if you don't like Haruki Murakami, I think you guys could enjoy this book. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And look out for my new video about Haruki Murakami. It should be coming out in the next month or so. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this review video, and I love you all, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!